jammed up and fucked with the lean and then the rest not kids. I turned out the meanest. I mean a menace. Fuck with me and you finish. Finish. You should be dead by now. Slam for waiting too much in this home ground. With the tablets and hollow tip rounds. Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Today we're going to take a look at a tragically overlooked scent from the house of Hugh Parsons. This one is called Oxford Street. This was a complete blind buy for me. And before we talk about the scent, let's talk about the house quickly. There's not much out there about Hugh Parsons. Supposedly, this is an English shirt and tie maker that goes back to the 1920s. But I have never heard of them as a designer doesn't mean they don't exist um, you can find their ties scattered around the internet on eBay but that's sort of really it um, we do know they started making fragrances in 1998 in Italy under a company named Profumo Italia which has a few different lines under their umbrella and their perfumer is a man named Maurizio uh, Cesira I believe or Cezira. Uh, he has done a scent for Zippo fragrances and he's done eight scents in the Hugh Parsons collection. This was the first that I purchased and I got to tell you guys I'm impressed. So I'm probably going to check out a few more. Um, probably Hyde Park in Kings Road. Uh, I really have enjoyed this one. Now this was one that I purchased from an eBay seller as a tester. I got it shipped for $32. Um, the only retailer that I know that stocks these is the European website First in Fragrance, which sells them for about $100 uh, US currency. You can usually find these cheaper. Search around, guys. There are deals out there on these fragrances. This one came out in 2009, so it's definitely fairly recent. And your notes on this one are mandarin orange, grapefruit, pink pepper, basil, and truffle at the top cardamom caraway anise black pepper and cinnamon in the middle and in the base you're gonna get sandalwood oud vetiver labdanum and patchouli do not have the box but they come in those sort of um, cylinder like boxes like aqua de parma scents come in in the Dior Privé ones uh, it's very very heavy glass colored red Hugh Parsons London 1925 you have a sticker on the bottom the cap is really really heavy metal kind of looks like a flask uh, a really nice sprayer. You have to press pretty hard to uh, get juice to come out, but it does shoot out nicely, nice even distribution. Um, so I'm actually really impressed with the presentation and I do keep this with my other niche fragrances, not designer fragrances. As far as the fragrance, um, yeah, I'm stunned that this hasn't gotten Fragcom Hyper Love because if you're a fan of like barbershop wispy scents like I am, Sartorio, Rudy Gouch, Invasion Barbar, this is going to be right up your alley. But it's different from the rest of the barber scents out there. And I say this because this one is really complex. It opens with a nice spicy citrus. You're going to get mandarin orange and a grapefruit combination. And that's really contrasted quite wonderfully with pink pepper, um, the sweetness of the basil, and the other spices within the, the fragrance. You know, you guys know how much I love the anise in my fragrances you get a nice dose of it here uh it's sort of an anise caraway combination so you've got this nice barbershop scent sweetened up with pink pepper but to me what really distinguishes this fragrance it makes it really good is uh, and what makes it so different from other barbershop scents that I've ever smelled, apparent from the very opening in this one, behind the citrus and, uh, and, and the spice is this combo of cinnamon, sandalwood, and a touch, and I do mean a touch, of oud. And that touch really for me is the starring piece of the fragrance because it contrasts so wonderfully uh, with the crisp citrus and the barbershop spice. Uh, I, I really like that combination. I gotta tell you guys, I haven't found anything else out there that's like this one. Um, now, there seems to be a trend recently uh, of, of perfumers becoming very comfortable mixing oud with citrus. Uh, Zerjoff did it a while back with Kobe, which has uh, oud in it, so orange blossom and, 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 and oud scent. Um, Dunhill did it with Icon, which is a citrus uh, top with uh, with oud. Bond did it with Shelter Island with that lemon, and Sarah did it uh, with 4,162 days with uh, a fragrance that came out with mine in that Crimes of Passion series called Be Careful What You Wish For. That's sort of an oud scent uh, with citrus. She told me when you sort of use oud the same way you would use oak moss, it doesn't over the power, overpower the fragrance and it just sort of becomes a note to accentuate. And I think that's how it's used here. So it's run, run, done really well here. 
Um, performance on this one is good. It's not gonna blow you away. It's fine, it lasts a good amount of time. It performs well during that time. Uh, nice siage, but not insane projection. Um, I think this is masculine because it is sort of that, you know, clean barbershop set, you know, but I also think it's stupid to say who can wear what. I just feel like guys will, will be a little bit more comfortable wearing this one, this one. Um, but you know, th that's my opinion doesn't mean anything uh as far as when you can wear this without a doubt this is a four seasoner you know i could say it might be a little stifling in, in the real heat and it might not stand up to, to bitter cold but i think it still could be pulled off either way and i love this guys i love this as an office scent uh because it really does have a professional air about it but also a little bit something a little bit different than, than the fragrances you'll see most men wearing in an office setting um office or casually this scent is going to do great for you in, in those situations if you're not able to get this and are looking for something similar then i would say sure look at sartorial look at reeve gauche uh look at invasion bar bar i'll tell you what the combination of the the oud and the and the spice also makes this a little bit reminiscent of m7 uh by yves saint laurent now that's more expensive and harder to find than this but if you want something close to this or can't find this i think any of those will, will fill in uh nicely but it's very hard for me to make a, a an apples to apples comparison with this one because uh, there's not a lot of smells out there like this i think if someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this scent they would tell you that if you can get it at that 30 dollars or $50 price point you're paying really good money for a nice scent with a very good presentation um, I think they would also tell you you're gonna smell totally unique with this one on the chances are not many people you know are gonna be wearing this and it's a very high quality scent I have to say um, the materials aren't the best I've ever smelled but they're blended just so to, to, to give this an air of, of, um, of regalness so if someone trying to talk you out of this, I think they might say, I don't know if it's gonna be worth your time to find this. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, as I just said, the materials are not impeccable. You can smell the difference between like this and, and Invasion and Sartorial. Um, and this just isn't a scent that's gonna float everyone's boat. Not everyone does sort of like those, um, those barbershop-y sort of clean fragrances. I love this. It's really easy for me to score. I love when it's a clear score for me. Uh, this is an 8 out of 10. If my two quips are I'd love to see it perform a little bit better and I'd sort of love to see this same combination of notes done by a really high-end uh, house using high-end materials. Uh, this does have a little bit of a synthetic vibe to it. With that said, not a problem for me. It is so good and it's so well done, I don't care. Uh, it could be approved upon. If it could be approved upon, that's, that's the way I would improve upon it, but uh, really good showing for the first, my first fragrance from Hugh Parsons. They have really impressed me. Definitely gonna go back and look at some of their other stuff. Um, and if you see these floating around online for the cheap, I would definitely, definitely take a look because uh, these, these are the real deal. These are, uh, these are, or at least this one. This is a really nice fragrance. You can tell the people who did this know what they're doing and wanted to, to make good fragrances. I don't think they did this by luck. It's not a intim, um, um, copy or facsimile of anything else out there. So if anyone else out there has tried this, I'd love to know your opinion. You know, get back to me and let me know what you think and guys we'll be back next week with more videos you know what it is my name is maximilian and i'm awesome.